I, I got to ask a question. Does the NFL care about its fans? Because I guess Roger Goodell was made available yesterday, and the NFL is just unloading, steaming piles of poo on its fans. They're going to move from four international games a year to eight international games a year. What is happening? What is going on? Brazil? We're playing games in Brazil? I watched Fast Five. That country is dangerous. That's a dangerous country. I don't want NFL players there. Yeah. I don't want NFL fans there. They might get carjacked. Yeah, that I mean, so that crime boss in Fast Five died, but I, I'm to believe that his son is now his running son, the operation. His son is still alive. We just watched the last Fast yeah. Furious movie. You know, Jason Momoa, his son. I don't know what the character's name was. I didn't pay that much attention to the movie. <laughs> but that guy, he's still running the country. So they're moving more games international. They're going to have two of the next four Super Bowls in California. Santa Clara in 26. LA in 27. Is LA going to exist in 2027? I, I mean, we, we talk about the poo problem. It'll be out to Santa Clara by 2026. The poo map that Ron DeSantis brought out. It's far away from San Francisco. LA as well. Goodell used the referees being right about the offsides call on Kadarius Tony to basically say, yeah, refs are fine in the NFL. While Troy Vincent, meanwhile, is like, no, it's a work in progress. But Goodell's like, yeah, we're all talking about referees this week. Oh, what are we doing here? We got that call right. I like that because he's literally doing, I mean, kind of what you're doing with the Patriots. But what all NFL fans do after they win a game, they're like, the, for the next week, it's like, you can't criticize this team. We're winning. We just won. Like, every, everyone feels yeah. so much better after they win. You go to the ESPN playoff machine, and you're like, I think we can run the table. Like <laughs> Until you find out they're eliminated. It's, right. It's literally just like, we won last week, so we're doing a good job. And that's what that's what Roger Goodell just dropped they're, on us. They're, they're screwing over the fans here. Uh, they're talking about getting rid of the fumble out of the end zone touchback rule, which everyone loves. It's one of the best rules in sports. Don't fumble, loser. Don't fumble the ball. You know who never fumbled the ball at Shorecrest Prep? Paul Gawatt. You know why? Because we were taught to not fumble. Otherwise, you had to run laps. We don't do that. We don't do that. If you're a Shorecrest Charger, you don't fumble. Yeah, that's not Chargers football. That's not Chargers football. That's well, LA Chargers football. Chargers. That is not very much Shorecrest Preparatory School Chargers football. It's the second douchiest school that I went to because Thayer Academy, the Thayer Academy Tigers, number one. I'm a, I'm a man of privilege. What can I say? Um, and also, uh, Goodell told Kareem Jackson, our guy, Texans legend, that defensive players are obligated to protect offensive players now. What? What? That's crazy. That is I ridiculous. Mean, Kareem Jackson has been uh, unfairly persecuted. He's been doing a lot this year. Honestly, uh, you know, when DJ came in with me that one time and was like, you know, like th those were totally fine plays. And I watched him back and I was like, yeah, what am I mad about? I like Kareem Jackson, number one. He actually hits and plays corner. No one does that. And number two, I guess he's a safety now. Number two, defenders' lives matter. So, uh, yeah, man, uh, Roger Goodell is slowly ruining the NFL. And it it's going to lead us to our next topic because who would have thought that we would be talking more about this than football in December? The NBA is the center of the sports world on this Thursday, December 14th of 2023. Remember Mark Cuban back in 2014 who said this about the NFL? Pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered. Well, tonight, if you want to watch football, we've got yet another primetime game featuring quarterbacks that leave a lot to be desired. It's my guy, Ed O'Connell. And Easton Stick, which sounds like a hockey stick brand for the Chargers. Meanwhile, between all the ejections and weird stuff, which we discussed yesterday, December basketball is much more fun. So obviously you got the Draymond Green stuff. Draymond Green got suspended indefinitely, his second suspension of the year for a repeated history of unsportsmanlike acts. By the way, he still gets to practice with the Warriors while being suspended. 
The NBA is just crazy. the the Warriors have to be like oh like the the actual know, players are like oh, right man. And, and I might get punched now <laughs> right and he has the, no outlet. The interesting thing is the Warriors do suck this year. That I think the Rockets have a better record right now. I think the they Warriors are ten and thirteen and the and the Rockets uh, who who won again at home eleven straight. Shout out to them. Um, yeah, they have a better record at this moment in time. So that's also making the NBA a little bit more enjoyable here. But my God, you got another just ridiculous moment in the NBA in a Bucks Pacers game. So they're Eastern Conference rivals. The Bucks and the Pacers played one another in the NBA Cup tournament. Tyrese Halliburton, who is the reason the Pacers have been surprisingly good this year, went off against the Bucks. So in last night's game, before all the bleep hit the fan, a Bucks broadcaster said, you know what? Wouldn't be bad. What is he? I don't know. Sean Stellano, Tommy DeVito. What would be the worst thing in the world if, I don't know, Tyrese Halliburton ended up with a knife in his ribs? physical at both ends of the floor and if you know uh, if a if a wayward elbow catches somebody in the nose if a, if a forearm shiver catches a, a you know two cockies want to be superstar in the chest so be it <laughs> I mean, i'm not naming any i names. was gonna say to I'm, be named nameless no, 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 I'm, just just it. It I, 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 I'm speaking in generality so it's brewing that the broadcasters are even in on the beef. Then a little bit later, Giannis Antetokounmpo gets brought down by Nesmith for the Pacers. What's his first name, Sean? Aaron Nesmith. Aaron Nesmith, okay. Brings Boston Celtics legend. Damn. Never played for the Celtics. Yeah, that's what I thought. I was like, I don't remember him ever playing. It must have been a bench player. He brings Giannis down essentially by the neck. Bobby Portis Jr., who is back on the box, and whenever he looks mad, his eyes look like dinner plates, goes crazy, needs to be held back. So you're thinking to yourself, oh, this has all the potential of malice at the palace because there was a big old scrum underneath the basket. But then things died down. Things get relaxed. And Giannis Antetokounmpo scored a career high and box record 64 points during the game. Here's where things just get so ridiculous, it's hard to believe. The Pacers, after the game was done, took the game ball into the locker room. I didn't know that the game ball for a basketball game mattered all that much. I figured there would be multiple game balls over the course of a game. But I guess traditionally, the team who wins gets the game ball. And if something noteworthy happened, they can give it to the guy who made something noteworthy happen. Like Giannis Antetokounmpo scoring a career high 64 points. But the Pacers took the game ball. I don't know how they did it, but they took it into their locker room. All we know, watching it on television, is that something triggered Giannis Antetokounmpo, who is a big guy, seemingly affable and happy at all times, but definitely not the kind of person, if you've ever watched him play, that you'd want to mess around with. Because like most of the European players, he's probably tougher than the American players. So something happens and he just runs into the tunnel of the stadium as if he is leading a charge against the armies of Sauron. He's Aragorn, except for he's six foot ten, the size of the mountain, running into this tunnel. And you're like, what the hell's going on here? Are we about to have a Rockets Clippers locker room siege or something? Police presence. Right. Help, help. Chris Paul's coming to beat me up. <laughs> so if it's, All time inside the NBA club. If it's Chris Paul that's doing that. Yeah, then then the inside the NBA guys get to laugh at it. But if it's Giannis, there's there's a chance that you something might actually bad. Need police presence. I think Giannis could probably blast through a door. And there's only a few players in the NBA that can do that. The Rockets have one in Boban. I mean, Boban is like the best guy to lay siege to a locker room. But everyone's wondering what the hell is going on here? Because no one knew about the game ball thing. I even texted one of my friends who is a Milwaukee area TV reporter. I was like, what the hell happened here? And he's like, no one knew until all of a sudden there's a lot of noise in the tunnel. And then they see this giant six foot ten guy running as fast as he can. So 
The Pacers took the ball, and this is where it just gets really, really funny. They wanted to give the game ball to a rookie who scored his first career basket, but his first career basket was a free throw. So he scored exactly one point in the game. This is as hollow as Draymond Green saying, I did not mean to punch Nurkic, but I apologize for it. They gave him a game ball because he scored his first career NBA point, which is technically true, but this is a guy who in the in-season tournament championship actually scored multiple points in a game that the Pacers won. So they decided they're going to troll Giannis, take this ball and give it to this guy, and poor Giannis after the game has this this long and rambling answer, and I'm going to read it because I couldn't find the audio of it, and I'm sure it'll take a long time but to uh, uh, to actually play it. But essentially, when he was asked, can you confirm that you have the game ball from tonight? Imagine that being a serious question asked at a press conference. He responded as such. I have no idea. I'm not going to lie. I have no idea. I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know. I have a ball, but I don't know if it's the game ball. It doesn't feel like the game ball to me. It feels like a brand new ball. I could tell. I played like, what, 35 minutes a day? I know how the game ball felt. What? Did you, did you smell it? Did you lick it? No, but he had his hands all over it. Scored 64 points. He knows what that ball feels like. He, he continues, Sean, the ball that I have, which I will take, and I'll give it to my mom for sure, <laughs> but I don't know if it's actually the game ball. Does it matter? Can't you just use a symbolic ball? Are, are you going to sell it? Do you need to sell it? Man who's making like $30 million a year? But it's okay. Lives continue. You think that's the end of the quote? Nope. The live's not continuing. Actually, I don't even have the game ball, which it hurts me. I don't have the game ball from game six in the NBA finals when the Bucks won the title. Uh-oh. I don't have the game ball from that either, but it's just unfortunate. I've never seen it. I've never seen this before. Like, you can't... I don't know. I'm not even going to comment on that, he said after speaking for at least a minute plus. I don't know if I have the game ball, to be honest with you. So Giannis Antetokounmpo did not get the game ball after a game where he scored 64 points. Tell me that this league isn't better than the NFL right now. Try. You can't. This, Like you mentioned at the beginning, this beef started brewing. Not not just Eastern Conference, not just Central Division rivals. They played each other in, I think it was the NBA Cup they semifinal. Did. Right. Yeah. And the, so it was, this yeah. is authentic bad blood. Yeah. And <laughs> you have... <laughs> Yeah, the Pacers stealing a ball. <laughs> now, some people will say, well, I just like sports. Uh, well, that's where we maybe differ. I like the drama and the craziness. And basketball, to open up the year in a month of December, has had this in-season tournament with these loud-ass courts that has actually made for more compelling games where players actually get this, play the whole game, or play in the game. It's led. It's It's featured... Ejections for no reason by NBA referees, who I, I think do need to dial it back a little bit, but it has been kind of funny to see all these star players getting ejected for little things like calling a ref a mother bleeper. And now you have a brawl. You almost had Malice at the Palace 2.0 over someone stealing a game ball. And we're, a, what, a month and a half into the year? The NBA is better than the NFL right now. It is. The NFL's got to step it up. I mean, tonight's NFL game is Aiden O'Connell versus Easton Stick. I'm not watching that. Yeah. Not no. even in solidarity with my Irish-American brother, Aiden O'Connell. Yeah, and Easton Stick, I, I don't know what ethnicity he is. I, I don't care. I don't, he can't lean into any stereotype. Because if he was leaning into a stereotype, we'd have a reason to watch. Yeah. It's the only reason to watch the Giants. Should he pretend he's Canadian or something like that? Because oh, that'd be a good one. Easton Stick does sound like a hockey stick. Yeah, because he's isn't Easton, Easton is a hockey brand. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's perfect. But but just it, shows up wearing like flannel jean jacket and jeans, like Canadian tuxedo. That would that would work. That would work. It's, <laughs> it's holding just, maple syrup, just, <laughs> just chugging it like he's Buddy the Elf. Has his way has in. a. I would say, hmm, who's a famous Canadian? Uh, Justin Trudeau. Have, have a, oh, ooh, ooh, uh, what's that guy's name? Was it Robert Ford? The old Toronto mayor who smoked crack? Oh, RIP. Dear, dearly departed. But get like an impersonator to walk behind him and pretend like he's your agent or something. Oh, and he yeah. has like a Canadian, Canadian dream team. Paul Bunyan, he's just like carrying an ax with him. <laughs> I, I don't know, but... Uh, listen, the NFL, the NFL is a problem right now. The NBA is more compelling, and it's December. 
And this is normally when no one pays attention to the NBA. The NBA is great right now. Hashtag this league. 